What's more effective for building muscle, body part splits, or full body workouts? Watch this. Our next caller is Justin from Colorado. Justin, what's happening? Hey, Sal. How's it going? Good. Hey, great awesome. Name, hey, buddy. guys. I just want to uh, first start off by saying, like everyone does, thank you so much for everything y'all do. I know I kind of wrote a little bit in my question, but been listening to you guys for the last nine months. Haven't missed pretty much an episode. Um, and y'all are a huge inspiration in getting me uh, to the point where now I'm uh, personal training myself. So thank you for that. Cool. Awesome. Um, my question today has to revolve around training and training splits, um, specifically a, a couple different questions. Um, so I'm looking to get into physique competition, uh, being a men's physique competitor, doing a natural competition. Within the next probably 12 to 18 months, I want to give myself a good kind of training base to go off of, um, as well as I'm looking at potentially in the future after that, I'm taking on some comp competition clients as well. Um, so I'm looking at uh, what training splits are for those. And I'm seeing with a lot of, you know, the top level guys, you see a lot of kind of bro splits, push, pull legs, upper, lower, but I don't see a lot of full body splits or full body workouts, which is what you guys I know uh, kind of push the most. So I was wondering what your opinions were um, as far as training, you know, natural and enhanced clients with, um, full body splits versus going into something like more of a push pull legs. Um, yeah. And what, what you guys had thought about that moving into, um, into training actual competition clients. Yeah. Sorry. I know I said that a few times. I love this. So this is, uh, I'm going to give a little, little story here because this is kind of what led to the creation of maps anabolic. Mm -hmm. When you look at the the evolution of, of muscle building type programs, what you see before the widespread introduction of performance enhancing drugs like testosterone, or actually the first anabolic steroid really used was Dianabol, um, everybody did a full body workout. Everybody trained the whole body three days a week. As anabolic steroids became a bigger player in bodybuilding and physique enhancement, you started to see athletes switch more to splits. So the question is why? What is, what is it about the splits that the enhanced athletes liked versus the full body, which natural athletes uh, you know liked even more? Well, there's a couple differences. One, when you're anabolically enhanced, you have a very, very enhanced uh, recovery ability, which means you could train with a lot more volume and a lot more intensity. If you're doing a tremendous amount of volume, a full body workout can just get too long, right? So if I'm if I'm doing 15 sets per body part and I'm training my whole body on a Monday, man, I'm going to be working out for three hours. It's just, it's just a very, very long workout. So that's one. So they split it up so they could do a lot of volume without spending so much time in the gym at any you know given moment. So that's one thing. The second thing is that when you work out with weights, you send a muscle building signal. And we can actually measure this with something called muscle protein synthesis. And we see that it spikes about 24 hours post-workout, and then it starts to dip at about 48 to 72 hours very rapidly, in which case it gets back down to baseline. So you work out on Monday. By the time Wednesday comes around, that muscle-building signal really starts to drop off and disappear. Now, this doesn't necessarily happen to an enhanced athlete because they're taking a hormonal chemical muscle-building signal. Like if you give – a man testosterone, high doses of testosterone, and don't even have him work out. He'll build muscle just from the hormonal signal. Um, in fact, there was a study that compared natural lifters to men who didn't even lift weights and just took testosterone at high doses. And the men who didn't lift and took testosterone built a little bit more muscle than the guys who lifted who were natural. So when you have a loud hormone muscle building signal, you don't have to necessarily go back and send another muscle building signal as quickly as you do when you're natural. So natural people, natural athletes, tend to build more muscle better with more frequency of training, hitting the whole body three days a week. Enhanced athletes can get away with one or two days a week of hitting uh, the entire body. Um, and of course, natural athletes can't handle the amount of, re the amount of intensity and volume that enhanced athletes can handle. Now, that being said, I'll make this argument as well. I'll argue that enhanced athletes will also build more muscle, train the whole body three days a week. Now, this doesn't necessarily mean that they train the whole body Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. They could still do a split, 
but they'll probably get better gains if they made sure to hit every body part three days a week. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now there are studies that compare this and the studies do show that more frequency tends to, it, it trends towards more muscle and more strength. Now the studies will show two days a week or two times a week for per body part is, seems to be the best for hypertrophy. But if you actually look at those studies, what you find is that the three day a week or three times a week, although the hypertrophy isn't necessarily better, you see strength trend a little bit better. And my argument is the skill aspect of resistance training. If I can do, you know, if I'm doing 30 sets of squats and I'm doing it two days a week, so 15 sets twice a week versus 10 sets three days a week, the total volume is the same, but I'm practicing squats three times during that week and I'm practicing the skill of squats. And, and that is a very important component to success with resistance strength. So when we're talking to most people, most people, we tell them full body workouts are best. Now we do have advanced bodybuilder style routines like MAPS split, uh, where you're doing more of a split type routine. Um, or even if you go extreme like MAPS PED, which is a split, a double split type routine. But yeah, for most people, especially natural, hit the whole body three days a week and you'll get the best results. That yeah, way. I mean, everything we know about the CNS is about frequency and about like teaching your body these movements. You get better at them. So from overall, from a quality perspective and in terms of performance, and I know, you know, within the bodybuilder world or aesthetic world, you know, that this is sort of one of those things that doesn't seem to be considered enough. Um, but the more effective you are in the gym uh, in terms of building strength, it, it actually promotes more muscle uh, and to be able to disperse more of that volume throughout the week uh, so you can really focus in on some of these major lifts and have that kind of um, you know focus and attention specifically on the ones that that move the needle the most uh, you know for me it just it's an advantage that you have versus doing legs all in one day and like having poor quality towards the end of your workout Justin, I'm sure you've, if you've been listening to the show uh, long enough, you've probably heard me say my goal is always to do as little as possible to elicit the most amount of change. One of the biggest mistakes I see people that are interested in getting into competitive bodybuilding, men's physique, bikini, any of those, is they look to the athletes that are doing that or already been doing that for years, and they look at how they train, and then they go right into that. And I just think that's a terrible strategy. Um, you know, getting ready for competing – I spent about a year training uh, before I actually started prepping for the show. So, and that, a lot of that was building my physique, building my metabolism, slowly scaling volume. And what it looked like was MAPS anabolic, MAPS performance, MAPS aesthetic, MAPS split, and then MAPS PED. It's like a year, that's a year and a quarter, year and a half of training right there in itself. And the idea was that there's, why would I jump all the way to PED just because my body can tolerate it or handle it? I'm not going to get the most results that way. I'm going to get the most results by doing as little as possible to elicit the most amount of change and slowly building volume over time. So my generic answer without knowing a ton of information about you would be that's how I would build my routine. It would be running a program like Anabolic right now, and I'm going to try and max out all the benefits from you know a program that's only a three-day-a-week type of training routine, and then I'm going to slowly scale that up uh, and that's how we kind of wrote the programs. I believe too, I don't know if I'm sure maybe Doug can look this up or maybe Sal, you remember, you remember when you wrote down, um, all the different pathways you would recommend based off of your goals. Did you do like a aesthetic bodybuilding one? Do you remember? I don't if, remember. Yeah. I mean, it would be what I just said, Yeah. but I, you know, Sal put together this on a, the, the mind pump media IG, uh, for Chokey a, a couple of years ago, I think for people when they ask questions like, Hey, this is my specific goal. How would you follow your programs? And I know we have a bunch of them in there. I believe we did one for that. If not, it's what I just said. That's what yeah. you would follow is that type of a route. Yeah. And you know, Justin, it's interesting because of all of the, uh, strength training or resistance training based sports, the only one that sometimes goes in this direction of each body part once a week is bodybuilding. You look at powerlifting, Olympic lifting, kettlebell track, any other strength sport, it's about frequency. Now you ask yourself why? Because they're much more focused on skill than hypertrophy. So what does this mean for you who wants to be a bodybuilder? Well, borrow from them. I think it's it's dumb to ignore that. And really this trend of training less frequency uh, of body parts didn't really happen until the 90s. Even in the 80s and 70s, they were doing body part splits and they were hitting the whole body two or three days a week. They were just doing so much volume, it didn't make sense to do 
the whole body in one day. They were in there six days a week, you know. I, uh, Which is what PED looks like. Yeah. yeah. PED it, was written that way. It's yeah. our highest volume program, like and, and we split it up like that. It is. And, and again, uh, you know, being enhanced with hormones allows your body to react, respond, and adapt differently than when you're natural. When you're natural, you overtrain, your testosterone goes in the floor. When you're enhanced, you overtrain, your testosterone's still high, right? You got a muscle building signal that's on all the time. When you're natural, it's on or off. And the goal is to keep it on more than off in order to build muscle. So those are the big things to consider. So if you're natural, I'd go full body three days a week. Uh, MAPS anabolic style, I think, would probably uh, be best. Okay. Shoot that, and, over. Shoot um, that over to him. Then, oh, sorry. Oh, um, one other um, small thing for you, because I know you all always say to kind of like, whatever you're not doing now is usually going to be what's best for you moving forward. Does that include with doing uh, or differing up like your body part splits versus a full body would going into like, I've been uh, running anabolic for the last three months. I just finished phase oh, three a I couple see. weeks ago. So would turning into something more like a push pull legs or like a maps aesthetic work? No, um, no, no. Ma maps, <laughs> ma maps aesthetic yeah. would be just fine. Um, okay. So uh, we'll send maps aesthetic to you since you have maps anabolic. There's a lot of variables you can modify before you modify the split. Okay. Okay. So there's a lot of things we can look at before we go into, you know, a push pull uh, split or a, you know, a even bigger split. And I, I mean, I, the, look, splits are fine. There's nothing wrong with splits. But here's them. here's what I want you to, to remember: uh, train the whole body, uh, whether you do it, you know, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, or five days a week or whatever, two to three days a week. That's that's that seems best. For most people, once a week is not enough for most people. And don't don't be afraid to run. I mean, we have time, right? I think you told me well over a year that you're 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 planning to do this, right? So this isn't like in a couple months, right? So yeah. don't be afraid to run Maps Performance either, because it is so different. Especially somebody who has like a bodybuilding mentality, it'll be so unique to how you you train right now that you're going to get great benefits for that. You're going to get tremendous benefits from it, and it'll be good to go away from a very traditional body part split type of a bodybuilder routine. Um, and I use that. That's how I use performance on my way of getting ready to compete was I interrupted the the bodybuilding mentality that I had in training, and I followed performance and saw great benefits from it. So don't be afraid to run that program either. I think MAPS Aesthetic is fine and perfect. I think that's okay for us to go that way. But it's okay for you to throw in performance for – you know, a phase or for uh, a, a cycle and then move back into like the bodybuilding focus. Okay. All right. Awesome. Cool. Thanks for calling in, Justin. Yeah, of course. Thank you guys. No problem. All right. Yeah, we haven't visited this in a while. We did it really early on because when we, you know, first started with MAPS Anabolic, we knew this would be a big question. Mm -hmm. Although I do see this becoming less of a controversial topic. I think when we first started seven years ago saying this, people were like, oh, full body. It's all about body. Oh. You're know, seeing more people now get this, right? It's interesting because even in the sports world, so I I had to kind of come in and and explain, uh, you know, to the to high school kids like to to stop doing the, the body part splits, and they were doing that for performance reasons, and so it still persists, you know, in terms of like what people think is the first type of program they should do is a body part split. Hey, if you enjoyed that clip, you can find the full episode here, or you can find other clips over here. And be sure to subscribe.